Here we are the uh, 5th of March. Uh, we made it through the um, difficult times of January and February. Albuquerque got down to about minus 11. We got, I don't think it was quite as cold here as that, but almost. Uh, we lost a few things, um, uh, but in general our greens made it through pretty well. Uh, the greenhouse uh, suffered a little bit, but uh, we continue to harvest. Uh, I've got several beds to show you now as we finish out our greens and move in now towards getting our spring garden planted, getting things ready to go, getting a jump on the season. And that always is an important thing. Two extra weeks can make a huge difference in your spring garden. So uh, this is the bed that we haven't been doing anything with um, except just leaving it covered and now it's time to kind of harvest our greens out of here and you can see that the Siberian kale uh, is ready to go. It's a wonderful size the uh, Russian kale, of course, it's always a little smaller, um, tender, really sweet, really nice, ready to go. Our bed of spinach is ready. Uh, dog, get out of there. Um, our bed of spinach is ready. Uh, so now I've got about uh, 80 or 90 square feet here. Uh, to harvest Get and for it. greens and that's a lot of greens. These can be dried as well for summer soups especially the uh, the little kales. Uh, this is the little mini bed and uh, haven't watered it. I need to water it. We planted this a little later and you can see the spinach is coming along really well. The carrots are moving on. Uh, it takes a little longer for winter carrots, so I'm hoping just as soon as it warms up that we'll get a little bit more growth on these. Uh, there's a little bok choy still alive. Uh, but I can pretty soon leave this open and we'll just kind of condition it in to the cold weather. Uh, We've rototilled already. I'm going to rebuild a bunch of beds here and kind of redo the garden so I can move things around, grow tomatoes in different places. Uh, this bed took a beating in the frost. Carrots are still there. There's a few in here that are large enough to say they've got little carrots on them, but they will probably pop pretty quick. Um, that's what's left of the um, radishes, and they're still producing so I'm leaving them alone but I'm going to be putting peas in this bed um, you can see here the the um, bok choy blooms which I particularly like and recommend you grow uh, they're excellent in salads they're uh, high in lutein they're a beautiful little flower they look nice and they're very edible very sweet Okay, well, let's go on into the greenhouse. Um, this is the uh, last of the parsley. Uh, down below here, there's a little bit of lettuce still left. Uh, the tomatoes um, uh, really took a beating during the cold weather, but they made it through. Um, here's an example of Tiny Tim and it's already in bloom so we'll have little tiny tomatoes I do want to point out the, the chlorosis on this you'll notice the light colored leaves on it that's cold chlorosis there's not much you can do about it because it's caused by the plants inability to uh, draw uh, nutrients in the cold so especially in tomatoes you can get this on your seedlings uh, or you can get this on uh, uh, other things um, here are my first transplants. Uh, these are all my Siberians. I've got pink honeybush, honey nail, uh, Siberian uh, uh, golden domes. These are all my really early tomatoes. Uh, we are following this up with um, uh, flamingo and um, 
probably some Floridaid and some some other um, uh, silvery fir tree, that kind of thing. Uh, here you can see they're doing pretty good. These are these little honey nails. They're not too tall. They're a little cherry, and they'll be in production here pretty quick. These I can transplant now. Again, I ate off of them once. Uh, but um, this is charred, and it'll transplant beautifully into the garden. In fact, I've got several we've already done that with. And down below here, um, if you'll see, I saved a few flowering plants that I'll, that I'll trim back and put into the garden to draw early insects with. Uh, keep waiting on this kale over here to sprout uh, and bloom. Um, but now, uh, why don't you explain, Zach, what you're doing? Okay, so we have the uh, little jiffy pots from, I guess, last... From the bok choy. No, from the bok choy last November. Sure. And uh, so we just took them and just took the... This was the upside, and then we just took the dead plant out of it, and we're just turning it over and opening it up and transplanting, or planting some seed, uh, some peas into it. So we just turn them over and open them up a little bit and stick two peas in. Poke them down. Okay, these are the, the uh, bottom ends of the bok choy that we ate. And if you remember, I, I let them grow up about so far. Uh, how did you cook yours when you took some? Um, home? We just steamed them and put some butter and salt and pepper on them. Yeah, pretty simple. Um, they make a nice ingredient in a winter soup as well with potatoes. Uh, so now we're going to get double use out of these. Um, if you remember, uh, this is what they look like when you get them dry. These are the are the super uh, the super size. I really like them because they're really tall. And uh, we grew the the bok choy on this side. Now we're growing the peas on this side. Now Albuquerque, we get hot pretty quickly, so I'm growing a, 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 a kind of a of an edible potted pea that can take the heat a little bit better than most uh, that most can. Um, uh, it's called um, sugar daddy, and it's a bush, so that I can um, uh, get them started two or three weeks early in here, and these will just transplant directly into the garden without ever disturbing the pea, uh, and that. Peas are kind of finicky that way, but I'll be able to do that. So if you live in an area where you've got a little bit of a problem with um, uh, uh, peas getting too hot and burning out too early, I'm not the greatest pea grower, but and Albuquerque isn't really the best place to grow it for that reason. But I believe that we'll be more successful this way, and uh, we'll be able to get a, a good row of peas going for early spring. With our earliest tomatoes coming, we expect those to be producing really soon. These will really jump on us here. Um, and the, um, uh, the tiny Tims, uh, I've got a whole flat of them down here. As they recuperate from that frost, um, uh, these are in bloom. They'll start producing a little tiny tomato. They can be grown in a row, and you can, you can pick uh, small half-inch tomatoes off a of tiny Tim all all summer long. It's just really a good producer. It's easy to cut it back and let it grow up again. I like them for containers and I like them on the porch. Um, we were pretty successful I think this winter with the greens. I learned some things that um, I need to kind of confess my sins here. Um, I had cut the bok choy off thinking it would come up again. It did, but it went directly to bloom. So I enjoyed those, but they were pretty small. Um, I neglected a couple, two or three flats of the, of the uh, lettuce, and it started to get, when you, when you let lettuce dry out a little bit too much, it started to get a little potent. So I just set them outside and just let them freeze off. and going to use that same dirt to get something else started in. But in general, I think we were pretty successful all the way through um, uh, until we got stopped. And as I say, 
we got stopped when it got down really below zero every night where we were five, ten, nine, maybe a little bit lower uh, for an extended period of time. Uh, nothing would grow, everything just sort of held on and we were just lucky to keep it going. So if you live in a really cold climate, uh, take my advice of getting all the plants that you need grown in that earliest period that you have in November, December, and into January so that when it really gets cold at the end of January and February uh, you'll have plants to eat and uh, we could have harvested the, um, uh, the kale over there but I just have this um, desire for kale blooms this spring so I let that bed go but we have 80, about 80 square feet of, of uh, greens yet to harvest over there and we will be cooking those up here pretty quick um, I think that'll do us for our sixth video again we're going to be converting over to uh, growing spring vegetables uh, helping us get a, a, a launch ourselves into the spring garden I'm going to be redesigning my garden again because I need to have new land to grow tomatoes on and move the tomatoes around. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, would appreciate any of your comments.